Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Area 41 for the invitation and the trust they put on me. Thank you, Candid. Thank you, guys. This is a good event, nice event, uh, community event, as it should be. Uh, my name is Rafael Salema. Uh, people call me Swank in the internet. And I'm, like Andy said, I'm Brazilian Maori coder for good reasons, uh, for red team engagement and stuff, and reverse analysis. Uh, today we will talk about some variation of classic remote code injection on process in Windows. We are going to abuse some characteristics of P files and like shared sections and handle inheritance. So let's start with a small video. Oh, the, the mysterious floating orb. <laughs> Ah, ooh, ah. Soup uh, Magic tricks requires attention deviation uh, of something happening in the background, so uh, behind the scenes. That's similar when we are trying to evade some EDR. We have to do nasty stuff behind the scenes where they are not looking for for us. We have to avoid patterns. So, uh, me alert, sorry, uh, just an alert. I, I tend to abuse means in my presentation, sorry about that. I can help myself, you weren't it, let's go. Uh, this is a, uh, an agenda, a fast who am I, uh, about my research, and so you can uh, contact me later if you have the same interest with why this stuff matters, why this presentation, why we are talking about this. Then we uh, level some knowledge on the required uh, concepts to understand the technique. Uh, we talk about the handle inheritance injection. This is just a name. I, I don't like fancy names for techniques, but just for differentiate for other techniques. A, a proof of concept. I will show you some code and some, I hope everything goes well. And some results uh, of engagement with EDRs or antivirus. So, fast, who am I? Uh, in the top right, there's a picture took by my wife while I uh, defending my PhD. No shoes, helped a lot. I was chill and talking with my professor. Professors can be tricky when you are defending your ideas. Uh, like I said, I'm a Maori coder, researcher. I, I did some uh, work in the past, like a, a proof of concept, the first OSX ransomware. Uh, I have some ancient papers, like Tuenane, it's a good old uh, zine from the past. Uh, this is interesting because uh, in my publication on 2098, some guy rediscovered, I did some in 2004, and some guy created a low bass, so this, this one was claimed later. But that the point here is take a look in the past. So techniques, a lot of techniques still working today. Uh, my academic research is related to pivot detection and rootkit detection. It's my blue team side. I'm a, a, actually a, a red team leader. I work with a bunch of nice uh, guys. 
And I do some trainings on malware analysis and reverse engineer and malware development for red team engagement. Okay, enough of me. Uh, this, one, this one is a, it's a project I conduct. is related to uh, save young guys from crime, cyber crime. Uh, we provide a, a path or a way to them to for poor talent kids so they can uh, choose the good way uh, and support. I support them with paying 50% of the course or the training. And if you like to join the project, it's fine, it's good. Uh, make us, let's try to do difference in other people's life. So, why this stuff matters? Uh, why this is relevant? The technique I'm going to show you. Because code injection are important in uh, modern malware techniques. So, in the context of modern malware, it's, it's a big deal. But you can't be detected. So you have to have some uh, new techniques or variation of the techniques in order to not be detected. So the, uh, important stuff, I think. Uh, somebody say, oh, my, my malware is filled, it's fully undetectable. Well, for what? It's, it's important to, to know. Uh, eventually, my malware can't be detected for the Environment I'm testing, I'm engaging. So the, this is a good point to, to think. Well, so let's, let's level some knowledge, uh, fast uh, knowledge uh, raise, uh, level. Sorry, sorry, my English is not that good. Eventually I lost the words. But let's talk a bit about code injection. Uh, arbitrary code is executed in, in the context of a running process. Okay, we're going to inject arbitrary code in a legit process. That that's the code injection in the end of the day is, is this. So there are plenty of different techniques of code injection, like DLL injection, P injection, early bird, and whatever, a lot of, a lot of them. Uh, the main target in the end of the day is to subvert a system process memory area to execute arbitrary code. Okay. Um, let's talk a bit about analysis. How, how antivirus and how EDR detect malicious actions. Uh, for example, understanding the API call chain is crucial, is important, because uh, the malware is a software, and software must interact with the uh, operator and system. So for connect to the internet, the malware must call APIs. For interact with a uh, file system, the malware must call APIs. So in the end of the day, to achieve functionality, your malware must call APIs. And the sequence of APIs talks a lot. For example, we can see uh, a uh, sequence of classic remote code injection. We can get open process, virtual lock, write process memory, quick remote thread. It's suspicious a lot when you see this kind of stuff running in a process. Okay. Um, uh, about memory analysis. Um, some hours just exist in memory. Uh, we, 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 many, therefore, we need tools to detect them. 
<laughs> uh, way to detect them. So uh, there are some nice tools like PEC, uh, Moneta, Volatility. There are a lot of other techniques that are nice, and and they they can help you. Uh, functional cost track analysis is gaining uh, strength in last days because of some technique called direct syscall. Direct syscall is important to, to understand, but it's not the, in the scope of this, this talk, but uh, it's relevant for detect this technique using functional call stack analysis. The, uh, the idea of the functional call stack analysis is to understand the flow of the program and when you do analysis in using the, the, the call stack, we can verify the, the, the caller's return address if it's resolving some loaded module. The, if not, probably it can be a, a shell code. It's a, it's a sign of a shell code and malicious activities. Okay. But we have uh, to understand how those tools work to exploit them. For example, uh, defense limitations. Product antivirus, EDRs, whatever, next gen stuff, they are products in the end of the day. They are business. If your EDR is too heavy, if the EDR can't, we have uh, uh, speed uh, or processing issues, if the machine gets slow, you don't sell in the end of the day. But uh, understanding the drawbacks and limitation of the these tools is important because they can't address every aspect of uh, detection. For example, they, they use some approach to detect some technique. And, and the point is that uh, we have to find an, an addresses gap in order to bypass them. So, uh, we have to understand how they, they are detecting some stuff. Okay, let's go into the technique. Let's try to explain the, how it works. We are going to exploit a shared section. P files, they, they, they have a lot of sections. And for example, text section, you can run code. Most of the time, um, data, you can have variable reserves, you can have uh, fonts and images, whatever. Uh, but there's a specific session we are going to talk. We are going to talk to image section memories shared. It's not that common to find these characteristics of the section because this section, a shared section, if I have the same image loaded in memory, both process can share this memory area. So if the process A writes in this area, the process B can read it and can write in process A we will have the same information in both processes without uh, calling some APIs to protect and unprotect the memory area, to change the permissions of the memory area. And this is good in, in, in regarding malware because we can share information between processes. Uh, okay. And it looks like antivirus and NDRs don't care about shared memories. This is 
uh, this is the idea. The process A, I already said, it can change, change the, the section, uh, the, the shared memory area, and process B, we, we will reflect it in the process B. Okay, that's the, the part of the sharing information between processes. Ah, it, it will, can you do it like writing a file on disk? Yes, you can do that. But I think is there's more footprint because you are interacting with file size system. Okay. Uh, when the, the open process API is important to in the process inject, remote process injection techniques. Why? Because if we want to create a handle to a remote process or another process, we have to call this, this guy uh, in the classic process injection technique. There are some uh, parameters, and but spe specifically we're going to talk about B handle, B inheritance, inherit handle, sorry. This, this uh, parameter is important. If you set this as true, it's a Boolean parameter. If you set this as true, you can, the child of your process can use this handle. So your great, great, great son of this process can use it. And that's a uh, characteristic we're going to exploit. Uh, let's talk about inheritance a bit. Let's see how, how we are going to exploit this one. For example, uh, the process one will be the first one we execute it. We will just call suspicious API open process. No other one. Part of the process injection. Just some regular other APIs. But we are going to inject in Explorer. You will then we have the shared memory uh, represented in, in green box. So we the first process open a handle to the uh, explorer process and it will use uh, B handle B inheritance handle as true. Okay. Then when we have this this handle open, this guy will call a son. We will call uh, create process and create another process, and his son inherit the the the, the handle. Okay. When this the, the process one perceives that the process two is alive, he kill himself. It's not necessary anymore. But they share the same memory area. The the son can still have the shared, shared area alive, okay? Uh, the process two will allocate memory in the Explorer, just this, and when, the, can you perceive what is happening here? I'm splitting the, the task of process injection in several processes. This, this breaks the legs of the EDR. Actually, far now, so far, I don't know if after this talk is, will, will be breaking. But, um, we are locating memory in the remote process. And when the second process perceives the third one alive, he dies. He kills himself. Then the third process writes a shellcode in the remote process. In this, he dies too. And when in the process four, creates the remote thread, in the and runs the shell code. And one important stuff that I don't see a lot in in, in codes, 
and probably is interesting is clean up your job in the end of the attack. You erase this memory using virtual free. It's not that common to see on available code in the internet. Uh, make the analysis, analysis uh, the reverse analysis life a little bit hard. Okay, then we have Explorer, we run some commands, what we want to do to run and clean up the memory, okay? Okay, uh, then API chain analysis, the scope of the API chain analysis is inside the process normally. So we break the API chain in several processes and we defeated them. Call stack analysis, I don't know why it's not detected, but it's not. Uh, most of the, the tools, because we have a shellcode running in the Explorer. Don't know why, but it's not detected. And memory analysis is defeated. In, the, you have a, just a small window of detection when during, in, after running, injecting the, the, the shellcode and running it and erasing. So it's kind of a fraction of a second. Um, okay, let's go to uh, proof of concept. I hope the gods of demo help me. What could be wrong? Let's go. Nah, just, just kidding. Let's go. Okay, um, can you see no. my screen? No, I, I, I need to, to show my screen. Ah, okay, okay. Let's. No, I think duplication. Extend. Aha. Okay. Okay. I I call this one in in assembly in in fuzz. I I I like low coding, low low level coding because we give me it give me some. Uh, freedom to code, and let's let's understand what's happening here. We have some the data section here. the The data the shell code is inside the data section. It's just calling some uh, HA file. The shared section is important part because the process will change these variables here, and they will, the orchestration will happen here. Uh, and this is the part of this control. Uh, if the, there's a handle, we jump to create handle. If no handle, we jump to create handle. If the, as there are memory allocated on the remote process, we allocate it and go on. So, write memory and run. Okay. Uh, the idea here is just to, to give a, a big picture what is going on. And I will run this, 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 this guy and I hope the, Shell code pop up. Mm -hmm. yeah. It works. 
This is a, a HA file. This is, is called from, from a server, a local server. I don't like, want to abuse the, my luck. Uh, there's a connection, he connects it and downloads it from a local web server and, and run. But uh, still, I, I tested online, downloading from the internet, and no, no detection at all. Mm -hmm. Not again. Yes. Okay, let's talk about results. Don't get me wrong, no shame here, guys. All great tools. Uh, just are not ready to recognize this, this approach of, of remote code injection. Uh, the, I could test in, I access, I could have access to any other, uh, Two and EDI or, or AV. So if you want to test, you can contact me. I would be happy to to test against your two. There are, there are some big names there. Uh, I put some reference for you guys if you are interested in the this topic. So you can research, do your own research, and understand what's happening. And that's all. I thank you for the opportunity. I hope you like it. And if you have some questions, we have plenty of time. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So, who has any question for SPAC? Don't be shy. I see one question. Just shout. I'll try to repeat. If it's also applicable to... Sorry, I missed the second part. For DDoS. Linux. Now I got it. So, is it also applicable for Linux? Uh, I think, I think that I, I coded it for Windows. Uh, I'm not into Linux much, uh, because I'm focused on, on malware for Windows. But I think, I think that there are similarities, but I don't think there are shared memory in, in, in Linux or handle inheritance, but probably there are something similar that can be done, I guess. Any other questions for the speaker? Everyone's ready for a coffee or for some sunshine? Well, if no more questions, then thank you again very thank much. Thank you, Nate. Thank you.